If you've wanted to know how to achieve an airy, wispy, flowing silk look using any color alcohol ink, then this is the video for you. I'm going to share all of my tips and tricks on how I do it, so pull up a chair and stay tuned. Hi, I'm Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. For this project, you're going to need a non-porous surface to paint on, like glass or acrylic or plastic paper-like substrates such as Yupo or what I'm going to use today, which is Duralar. Like Yupo, it comes in sheets, but rather than being polypropylene, it's polyester. It's also archival, and this translucent matte version accepts other mediums like pencils or pens, so it's pretty versatile. You'll need alcohol ink in one or two colors that work well together and ideally blend to a nice color. Isopropyl alcohol, 90% or stronger, this really doesn't work well with 70% or 50% rubbing alcohol because those have too much water in them and they tend to break up the ink in a way. You'll need a container in which to thin your alcohol inks. You can use a cup for each color or a palette. A way to transfer your thinned alcohol ink to your surface. Pipettes work nicely or droppers. I'm going to be using squeeze bottles for each color to make life easier. And finally, something that can blow wide streams of air, like a heat gun or blow dryer. Personally, I prefer a blow dryer if I'm working on a thin plastic based substrate because the heat gun can be so hot that it can warp or blister the surface you're working on. I find that when I use a blow dryer, I never have to worry about that sort of thing, no matter how close I get or how long I spend in a certain spot. A couple of extra supplies that might help are clear tape, maybe a couple of alcohol ink markers in colors other than the main colors or color that you're gonna be working with, a ball stylus if you have one, and or a fine point paintbrush. These last supplies really are not necessary for this project. It's just for a couple extra tips that I'm going to show you along the way and at the end. Now let's talk about thinning out ink. Now, I wish I could give you a formula. For example, tell you to add 10 drops of alcohol ink to 50 drops of alcohol to thin it down. The only reason I can't do that is because every single alcohol ink color is different, even within brands. Some colors are much more pigmented than others and therefore require a lot of alcohol, while some require a lot less. The one thing I am going to tell you is at the beginning of this, really avoid light colors, like really pastel colors, at least at the beginning because the goal is to get a really wet puddle of ink and alcohol to move around. And if it's a really light color and you thin it down with a bunch of alcohol, you almost won't be able to see it. So it's not going to be as fun to work with. <laughs> so rich colors are better for this in a way. So let me show you what works for me. I'm gonna be working with Pinata inks by Jacquard. I love their vibrant color. And because they're so rich in pigment and deep in color, I can really thin them down a lot, which is ideal for me for this technique. Now, this bottle has this ink in it. I had maybe 10, 15 drops of alcohol ink at the bottom of the bottle to seriously like a millimeter from the bottom. And the rest of this is all alcohol. That's how much I have to thin this ink down. Now, the blue, I didn't have to thin as much. 
same amount of ink and I only had to put about half the bottle of alcohol. And I want to show you what the inks look like to start out with. So here's this color before I start and here's the blue. When I've thinned them down, I want to get them to look like that. And then this one is that. You want it to be this thin. And here's a tip while you're practicing this technique or any technique for that matter. Use freezer paper as your practice paper rather than anything that's pricey because freezer paper is dirt cheap. And the shiny side is just as non-porous as those other fancy papers. So if I drop some alcohol ink on freezer paper, the shiny side, I can easily wipe it off just like I would be able to off of any of the pricey papers. So this is a great surface to practice techniques on. Now, since I'm going to be blowing so much air at my Duraler, I like to tack it down to my work surface to keep it still somehow. And you know, keep from blowing it off my work table or heaven forbid, flipping it over. Because you know, you kind of want your art to stay where you want it while you're working. So I'll either tape it down right to my work surface or I might tape it to an elevated platform um, like this so that I can move it around. But either way, it occurred to me that if I was going to tape down pieces like this anyway, this step was an opportunity to do something extra to give a piece a little finishing touch. Earlier I mentioned possibly using scotch tape. And the reason I sometimes use it is that I will put a border of tape all the way around my piece so that when I'm doing the ink, the scotch tape prevents it from reaching the edge. And when I'm done with my piece, I peel the tape off and I have a lovely border around my piece. So what I've done here is taped my piece of Doralar to a piece of glass and I've done the border all the way around. Now something else I've done is I've put this piece on a Lazy Susan. You don't need to do that. The reason I did is to keep me from having to put the blow dryer in frame too often. So if I couldn't move the piece around, I would be moving the blow dryer and I would be blocking what you get to see. So by putting it here, I can keep the blow dryer in one piece and then move the piece around. It definitely is a fun way to work. I'm going to start out with a little puddle here, maybe one over there. And it looks amazingly neon when I first put it down, but it doesn't dry that way at all. And I'm just adding a little bit of alcohol around it. Already I'm developing sort of the ripples of fabric that I like. And here I have that lovely fade from nothing into color. And let's say that I want more of that here. All I have to do then is add alcohol to this area, flood the area, give the alcohol a couple of seconds to start working, and then start blowing again.
So anywhere that you want that fade, put alcohol down and blow away and you'll get that. Now, if I want to introduce another color, let's say here, I can pour some color down. And again, I'm going to put some alcohol in front of it. And I have this really lovely sort of fade from the aqua into the pink. And what I love about these two colors is that they make this beautiful purple without my even having to add purple as well. The goal when you're working is to keep the blow dryer moving. Keep it from staying in one spot and also keep the alcohol from wanting to make too much of these little spindlies. The spindlies can be pretty. That can be a look that you're after, but if you're going for the fabric-y kind of look, that may not work. So if you have some like I have here that you wanna get rid of, what's the answer? Alcohol. So I'm going to put alcohol here. Let it sit, kind of work its way through, and start blowing. Now this time, I'm going to blow that way, away from where I want the spindlies to get erased. I kind of want to add a little bit of yellow, but I don't want to make up a whole batch of yellow just to add a little touch of it somewhere. So what can you do? If you have, let's say, a yellow Sharpie or a yellow alcohol marker of any kind, you can use that. And I'm just going to use two different markers. One is a Spectrum Noir, so a lower cost one. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow here. And then more of a gold tone Copic. And again, if you have Sharpies, that'll work too because they're alcohol ink too. And now I will add some alcohol on top of that and let that work through. Now I've added a patch of yellow without having to mix up some yellow. Now in theory, you could do your entire drawing that way or painting that way. Just put patches of marker down and do the whole thing that way. That works really well too. That works really well when you're working on a small piece. So let's say you're going to do a four inch tile that's really the way to go because then you're not working trying to put down little drops of color and possibly flooding the whole area with more color than you wanted. Well, now I'm kind of looking it over and deciding what I want to keep, what I want to work on. I think I want to maybe remove this area a little bit. so much oh and I like this area here I feel as if the yellow just it's too straight of a line so I'm gonna work on that a little
absolute trick to this is to always keep moving. Try to keep the air blowing in different spots and try to keep pushing at the wall that's forming. So if a wall starts to form and seems to break up into little fingers and you don't want the fingers, well then turn the blow dryer and blow at the wall in the other direction and your fingers won't happen. Um, but, you know, like I said, there are times that fingers are the way you want to go. Like, in this piece, I went to town with the fingers. I wanted lots of the fingers because I thought that would be cool. And sometimes that is what you're going to want. Now, I can definitely say this is done. It's really pretty. I love the flow, the fabricated look. But let's say that we want a little bit more. Let's say we want to add little embellishments like this. How do we do those? Instead of just working on this piece, I've decided to leave this one alone so that I can take the tape off this one and show it to you. And I figured what I would do is continue working on a piece that I had been playing with the other day. Similar colors, very, very similar colors. Um, and I had already started embellishing this. So then that way we'll be able to compare the two and then you guys can tell me if what you like better with embellishment or without. Okay. Now this is where either our paintbrush or our stylus or both will come in. I'm gonna be working mostly with the stylus because the paintbrush can do a lot of what I'm going to do, but it's difficult to get perfectly round dots or as round as I'd like. So I won't be using the paintbrush for this but it does a very, very similar thing. It just makes more, I don't know, random shaped dots. So what I've done is in a palette that had different drops of alcohol ink, I had let them dry. And I've just added a little bit of alcohol to a couple of them to wake them back up. And what's nice about alcohol ink is I can just let this dry whenever I like, put it away for months, and then add alcohol again. And it's almost like if you're working with watercolor and adding water. Alcohol is to alcohol ink, what water is to watercolor. So if I add water, alcohol, I mean, to the alcohol ink, the dried, I get reactivated alcohol ink. So I'm just going to now dunk the end of my stylus into whatever color I want. And I'm just going to literally drop a drop and then gauge the size and decide whether or not that's as big as I want it to be. And if I want it to be a little bigger, I can just start circling. And this lets me create the size I want, as many as I want in whatever pattern I want. And that is really all there is to it. I'm gonna zoom you in to show you a specific thing. If I make a dot, let's say I make a dot here, and I go to make another dot, and I want them to overlap, I really need to let this one dry completely before I go in to make my next one. If I make it, leave it wet, and then come to add another one, all I'm gonna do is make a blob. I'm not going to have an overlapping dot, which is what I would want. And so now what I'm gonna do is let this dry completely to fix what I've made here to show you the mistake that I wanna help you avoid if you want this look. So now when it's dry, I can come in and add an adjacent dot and I will sort of work the circle and now this one will overlap without distorting the previous one. And by doing this sort of circular motion I get to shape the dot that I'm putting down. And I just kind of do that. I can overlap colors. Now, since I had already removed the scotch tape from this piece after finishing it, 
I put a couple of pieces back down in this corner when I realized I wanted to embellish close to the edge. That way I don't have to worry about leaking into the frame area. I can work pretty close to the edge now without being worried about it. Now if I'm just going to drop one dot out by itself, I don't have to do the circle. It'll make a circle all by itself. But if I'm overlapping them, sometimes when they overlap, they end up as round as I'd like. So I like working them myself. And since I'm working on this, I'm just going to work this area because this spot was darker than I wanted it to be. This happened when I was blowing earlier on this piece and that was one of the little tendrils. The end got a little darker than I want. So I'm just dunking the end of my stylus into straight alcohol for this rep repair, if you will, because it stands out too much. So there are ways of correcting things you don't like without having to really undo a whole section. I think that's enough. I think it's balanced and I like the contrast between this bubbly texture and the silky, fabricy, airy look in the background. So now it's just time for the tape removal. Now I have a really clean corner and I love it. I love this one very much. Let's now, take the tape off of this one. This is always seriously the most satisfying part. <laughs> There's something extra exciting about it. It's almost like unwrapping a Christmas gift. Ugh, oh, look at that. Ugh, oh, love it, love it, love it. Ugh. Oh, too much fun. And I've tried all different types of tape. And honestly, this is just dollar store scotch tape. I mean, like, you know, it's not scotch tape. It's not the brand scotch. It's whatever brand the dollar store carries. I get six rolls for a dollar. And it is really actually better than blue tape. When I use blue tape to do this, uh, it doesn't really stick as well and really flush. There are sometimes little leaks that don't happen with this cheap tape. So this is the way to go. here and here, but those are really easy fixes. I think they're actually, yeah, they're actually on the back side, so that's not a problem. It kind of went, ran underneath, so definitely no problem. Okay, so now tell me what you like better. Without or with? I will be really interested to hear in the comments what you guys think. And you can let me know you want more videos with a thumbs up. Tell me what else you'd like to see done with alcohol ink or resin or acrylics. I'm compiling a list and will be tackling it bit by bit. Now my very next video is going to be my 50th video. So it's going to be a little special. So definitely stay tuned for that there'll be a couple little extra surprises at the end of that one. This is a very good time to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications if you haven't already done it. 
Links to supplies are in the video description box as always. And continued thanks for using any of my Amazon links as your portal to the site when you shop on Amazon. It's such a kind way to help. And huge thanks to those of you going even further by sponsoring this channel. Please share this with as many friends and groups as you can. And now go let your creative nature shine. See you next time. I've really missed you all. Bye now.